Those who are wise will shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament, and those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were said to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour into our hearts, O Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, at whose prompting the deacon St. Ephraim exulted in singing your mysteries, and from whom he received the strength to serve you alone. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from first book of Kings. The brook near where Eliza was hiding ran dry, because no rain had fallen in the land. So the Lord said to Eliza, Move on to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have designated a widow there to provide for you. He left and went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, Please bring me a small cup full of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her, Please bring along a bit of bread, she answered, as the Lord your God lives. I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Eliza said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah has said. She was able to eat for a year, and Elijah and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me. O oh, my just God, you who receive me when I am in distress, have pity on me and hear my prayer. Men of rank, how long will you be do of heart? Why do you love what is vain and seek after false food? Lord, Lord let your face shine on us. Know that. The Lord does wonders for his faithful one, faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Tremble and sin not. Reflect upon your beds in silence. Lord, Lord let your face shine on us. 
O Lord, let the light of your countenance shine on us. You put gladness into my heart more than when grain and wine abound. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand, where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our Gospel today, Jesus uses two uh, important images, salt and light. And so I thought it would be a... a a nice thing today to take a, a fantastic journey with Father Bill, the science guy, to talk about uh, these images. So the first is salt. We know that in the ancient world, salt was used as a preservative. And what it does is it the salt uh, particles adhere to the food and in kind of the molecular level, it goes in and it, as the water uh, comes out of the salt of the cells of the the meat or whatever is being preserved, the salt actually uh, evaporates the water. And so what it does over time uh, is in preserving the, the food, it, it hardens it, uh, it makes it more durable, it lasts longer, uh, and it serves as that catalyst to help all of that process occur on a molecular level. So not something that we see visibly other than the fact that the meat or whatever is being preserved changes over time uh, and actually becomes harder and, and uh, less easy to break down. And then if you look at what happens when it's salted for food, uh, actually on the, again on the molecular level, the proteins of the food are changed and it draws out uh, the, the, the proteins that affect taste and also smell. And so it actually uh, makes them more potent and allows them to come out in a, in a stronger way. So everything on this, of course, happens on this molecular level, on something that we can't see with our visible eyes, but something that we can experience. Secondly, with light. Uh, Jesus uh, uses this image of light. Now, of course, we know uh, from you know, modern t technology and science that light is actually electromagnetic radiation. And the part of the, that spectrum that we can see is actually pretty small. But there's a lot of different types of what physics calls light. There's ultraviolet light, infrared light, all the, the different aspects of light. And only a small portion of it is actually visible. And so thinking about that, you know, when Jesus says, you are the light of the world, the, the important thing to remember is that that light, that visible part, is actually only a small portion but it's actually, there. the whole spectrum is something far greater. And so in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And so the thing to remember is that, you know, God is the, the whole spectrum. And he's working in ways that we can't always see. That, you know, the human eye can't perceive ultraviolet light in the same way that, uh, you know, an insect can or that we can measure with uh, our instruments and technology. But the light is still there even though we can't see it. And so Jesus is calling us out and saying, well, you need to be that visible light in the world, that God is at work in the world, that he does things sometimes that are visible, but that there's so much more to God than, than we can possibly see. And so we need to be a reflection of that light that comes from God. When you uh, have that light in a dark room, it illuminates everything. But 
to remember that we are a reflection of that light that comes from God, that we are part of that spectrum, and there's actually so much going on uh, more than we can't see where God is acting uh, in the world. And so these two images where Jesus calls us to be salt and light, that first we illuminate this dark world that we live in by how we live our lives, that we are a reflection of that divine light that comes from God. And secondly, we act as a preservative and also to make the, the flavor even greater so that through our faith, through our devotion to the Lord, that we can be that protection uh, for, for the world to, to make it more durable, to make it greater, to help it to last, but also to taste even sweeter, to taste better. And so to remember that we are called to be that, uh, that salt and light in the world, but that it's something also that's not necessarily always visible to the whole world, that those actions of the, the salt and the light they, uh, you know, the salt is a, is a, occurs on a molecular level, so we can't see it with our visible eyes, but it happens nonetheless. So to never kind of worry about the fact that maybe our actions aren't visible to the world and we don't receive credit, because in the end we're helping uh, others by our actions uh, to come to holiness, to come to faith, to come to that knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so to use the graces that we have received in the right way to help be that salt and light in the world, to affect that change that will help the world to see the truth, the beauty, and the sweetness of Jesus Christ, so that all may receive that, that faith and that hope in their hearts, and that the Lord may dwell here uh, in this world to change it and to bring it to uh, its completion as God intends. Amen. And now let us stand and bring before our merciful Father our needs and petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for all the bishops of the church, that they may always teach the faith with zeal, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the men of our archdiocese who are preparing for ordination to the priesthood and diaconate, that they may always have zealous hearts uh, for souls in their ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for uh, those areas of the world that are affected by war or violence or civil unrest, especially in our own nation, that uh, those who are affected by it may be consoled and that we all may work to bring peace and justice in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who, are, who work in uh, liturgical ministry, uh, especially in our own parish that through the intercession of St. Ephraim they may always glorify God by their work, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are sick and suffering, especially in our own families, our friends, members of this parish, those who are terminally ill, those suffering from the effects of the pandemic, pray for all expectant mothers, that they may always feel the consolation of Christ in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And we pray for those who will die this day, those that die alone, those that have no one to pray for them by name. We pray for all those who die without the benefit of the sacraments and those who die by war or violence, that they may be drawn quickly into the mystery of God's loving embrace in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers that we address to you confidently in the name of your Son. Grant us what we truly need through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless, Bless me, God, God's bread. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God's bread.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. As we celebrate the divine mysteries, O Lord, we pray, may the Holy Spirit fill us with that light of faith by which he constantly enlightened and blessed St. Ephraim for the spreading of your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We live unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. For you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Milton our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take you away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, can you take away the sins of the world? Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, can you take away the sins of the world? Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We invite all those who cannot receive the Lord now in the Eucharist to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. We proclaim Christ crucified, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Let us pray. Refreshed by heavenly food, we humbly implore you, O Lord, that attentive to the teaching of blessed Saint Ephraim, we may abide at all times in thanksgiving for the gifts we have received through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. ourselves to Our Lady Mother of the Church. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 